Hello, Michael Hello. Schluter. Uh, you are the director of the Organic uh, EU group here in Brussels. Uh, Organic Market Info is media partner for this event, so that's the 10th anniversary of EFOM EU group uh, here in Brussels. And uh, we want to know a few uh, things from Markus Schlüter here. So, um, EFOM members and guests are celebrating the 10th anniversary of EFOM EU group these days. You have organized an extent program of excursions, conference, and under the motto, Making Europe More Organic. Can you please uh, tell us about the background and uh, the goal so, of this event? Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, I think what started 10 years ago, I mean, the iPhone EU existed before, but we uh, were establishing, after long discussion, the sector representation um, and with some um, creator of making, uh, uh, making Organic Waves in Brussels. And yeah, this has become a success story. I mean, I started as first employee, now we have 12 employees in the office. Of course, fighting hard to sustain also this level, but also understanding how it works. So we thought after 10 years of, of having done this crucial step of having a permanent representation in Brussels, we must celebrate first, yeah, because the organic sector, of course, the movement knows how to have a party, but also to reflect what has been achieved and also to reflect what has to come in future to be also successful for the next 10 years. Yeah, so uh, you're a couple of guests here in Brussels. How many guests do you think, uh, are, or you know it, because they are uh, uh, on the forum, uh, and on how many countries do they come Yeah, from? we have uh, about 150 people coming here, and uh, from around 25 countries. And the, the guests are, of course, from our membership, from different organic operators, but also the Commission invited, but I also saw that there are guests who are just interested to listen. There are, of course, the people from the Parliament, assistants from the Parliament, and also representatives from the Member States who work in the stand, Standing Committee of Organic Farming. I saw here also some, so it's, and of course some uh, NGOs who work with us in Brussels. So it's quite diverse a mix, and it's very good, so that there's a good exchange of, of, of experience and, 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 ex and also future visions are possible. Yeah. So if IFOM EU group uh, has developed from a small structure 10 years ago into a very well-known and well-recognized um, lobby group in Brussels, uh, what have been the most important milestones uh, stones these years ago? I think it's, it's difficult to say, but I think the, the ingredients for success were for sure that we understood step by step the, the, um, how to influence the process, how to become part of, of, of being consulted in the, in the decision making process and legislation making and uh, so for example it was important that we are part of, of, of major events. One, one highlight was for sure in 2011 that we have been invited to the informal uh, meeting of environmental ministers as well as agriculture ministers in, in Hungary under the uh, uh, Hungarian EU presidency and so this is one example that we, we have the strategy to work very close with the running EU council presidency of course on different levels depending how open they are in Garnik to be let's say uh, considered as the main lobbyist and, and, and stakeholder for organic farming in Europe which concerns the organic regulation but also research innovation policies, the common agriculture policy, GMOs and all the issues so you are part of it of course on the organic regulation it's easier on, on other parts difficult and Particularly on regulation, we are we clearly and in, in, in far in front to be the main uh, organization representing organic. And here the highlight was, one example was uh, the wine regulation and implementing rules, where we were having in the second round a compromise which became legislation against uh, the, the common market regulation on wine. But as we convinced the commissioner and had the organic unit on our side, we were able to uh, make this incredible success. So, work is going on. <laughs> So let's look a little bit in the future. Uh, what are the most important issues you are working on by now and uh, what will the future bring? Yeah, I mean we have of course always two things. We have to look what's what's coming up from policy and what we let's say want to do or on being ahead of, of, of the agenda and being self-initiating. And of course we have very uh, urgent uh, the regulation review of the commission where we have a new action plan and a new 
probably a new legislation proposal from the Commission in spring 2014, which means we will discuss it and, and, um, with the Parliament, with the Member States, who can then amend this proposal, um, how organic farming has to be done in 2000, uh, from 2017. So we have new rules in 2017, and this is the basis of our, all of our business, of our uh, movements. And so there, this is the most crucial one where we, of course, want to give input, contribute, and make sure that organic can continue its success story. First, of course, we have the implementation of, of different uh, issues that were now decided, and policy frameworks like the Common Agriculture Policy are very important, like the Horizon 2020, this is a research innovation framework, yeah, the, the proposal for seed legislation, so how to seed can enter the market. And on the long term, we just kick off uh, tomorrow in our, our celebration, the, the process for Vision 2030, where we want to give, let's say, direction for the stakeholders, for the sector, where we want to be with organic, where, what should it deliver to society and on what uh, values we want to, let's say, uh, base our, our, our activities. Yeah, so thank you so much for the interview. Good luck and have a nice party tonight and uh, good success for tomorrow. Thank you.